book of Isaiah, chapter 47, verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of Chaldeans. For thou shalt not more be called tender and delicate. First and foremost, I want to give all praise to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah Bashem Rakakadash. The double honors on the positive hell spread and the truth out of the four corners of earth. I'm here with that can be lesson. Let's get it. Second Peter chapter three, verse one and down. This second appeals to be love, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, apostles of the Lord and the Savior, knowing this first that there should come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the Father fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the world the God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out the water in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly man. And I read to that because um, this is the this is the promise of the Lord, the Lord, um, the Almighty, the Creator, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, destroyed the old earth. Um, he flooded it though. He didn't destroy it. He flooded it. And he's saying right here, he's preserving this, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserving to the fire against the day of judgment, perdition of ungodly man. So this world we living in right now is being preserved for the fire. If you know anything about the Lord, he's a just balance. And, um, you know, he got rid of the old people in the old world with water. Now it's fire. You know what I'm saying? Me to you. Second Peter chapter three, verse eight and down. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. And time been flying by crazy, man. Like we already at the end of this week, man. I remember going to work. I was like, man, I'm just got to work. I swear it was like five, six hours and went by us. Like I'm already getting off of work. Crazy. Time is time is getting short. The Lord is not slack or concerned his promise, as some men count slackness, but as long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants us to come to repentance, Israel. You know what I'm saying? Get it. Let's let's go. But the day the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. So the Lord is coming unexpectedly. The heavens going is going to be great noises going off in the and uh, mi nuclear missiles, everything going off, big noises, big bombs, big stuff going off, and the elements going to be melted with fervent heat. So that's the heat on this earth. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what man of person ought you to be in all holy conversation, godliness? So knowing that that we got pending destruction on this earth, what man of person should you ought to be? You should be walking up uprightly. You should be praying to the Lord. You should be being a good representation to people when they do see you. You be trying to uh, repent from your sins. Looking for a haste until the coming of the day of Yahweh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall be met with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise and looking for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwell righteousness. So, yeah, this is coming. So it's going to be melting everything. You know, that's the, that's the, you know, that's the bitter in the belly, but. According to his promise, the Lord is not a man that he shall lie. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth dwell in righteousness. This earth is given over to the wickedness. But when Yahweh Shah come back, the only begotten son, he going he gonna to set the stage. And it's going to be a whole new world, new way of life. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found on found of him in peace without spot and blameless. We want to be blameless in the times to come because the Lord is, is judging this place and, vi and visiting us. Second Ezra chapter seven verse six and down and I'm gonna jump around towards the end. There is also another thing, a city building and set upon a broad field, and it's full of good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and set in a dangerous place to fall, like if there were fire on the right hand and on the left of deep water. And one and only one path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that it could be one man go there at once. If this city now were given unto a man for inheritance, inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall, shall he receive his inheritance? And I say, it is so, Lord, that said unto me, even so also is Israel portion. I'm going to go down to 12, 13. Then were the entrance of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. There are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the entrance of the elder 
Elder World Worldwide and Sure brought immortal fruit. And based on this is talking about the narrow path to the kingdom. Um, you know, it's beautiful things to see at the light. You know, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see this world is about to wrap up, but we have great pearls and great tribulation to get to the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Like Jacob Trouble on the way. Dane 12 and 1 be a, be a time of never before. You know what I'm saying? Michael, the great art angel standing up. So things are getting, you know, we living in the signs. You know what I'm saying? Earthquakes, pestilence and, diver, you know, diverse places like this is the same time the Lord is about to visit this place he created. And it's it's very beautiful, but it's also terrifying because we don't know where we're going to land in this whole situation. So having faith and understanding and hoping the Lord is dealing with you, you praying and seeking him daily. You know what I'm saying? We might get through this. First Peter chapter four, verse seven. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Second Peter three, verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the arrow of the wicked, far from your own steadfastness. So the, the end of that time is, is at hand. All through the scriptures, you know, it's been a ticking tock, you know, a ticking clock. And we at the last little few grains of this hourglass. And so, you know, it's going to get real rowdy out here. Buckle your seatbelt. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. That's the remnant. Two thirds of this, he said, all the land. You know what I'm saying? The Lord, the Lord is not an author of confusion. He said, He said, it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off. Those the people and the immigrants and the inhabitants. Revelation 12 and 12, woe to you, have it as a rejoice ye heavens. The, the devil coming down having great wrath. Yeah, the Lord going to allow this devil to have free reign for a limited time. And the Yahweh Shah the, and the heavenly host is coming back. Zechariah 8 and 9. Well, 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire and refine them as silver is refined. And I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people. They shall say the Lord is my power. So that's why I basically was reading the second edge is about the narrow path. Like it's water on one side and fire on the other side. The Lord is from the trials. This is the great trial tribulation. He said, I will bring the third part through the fire and we refine them as silver is refined and we try them as gold is tried. So this is not an easy test in the trial tribulation in front of us. He said, I will hear them. He said, they shall call on my name. I will hear them. And I will say it is my people. So we got to call on our power as we going through this. Like it's, it's scary, but. You know what I'm saying? Matthew 7, verse 21. Now, everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that do the will of my fire, which is in heaven. So when I was reading about the parables, the versions, the five was five, five was rulers, they were basically like, they was like, Lord, Lord, open up to us. He said, I don't know you. Because you know why? They didn't do the will of his father. Like I was saying, a lot of people know the name of the Lord, but they don't really, his, their heart is far from him. I'm going to have to get that scripture. Many people prophesize my name with words, but their heart is far from me. We got to do the will of the Father, the Heavenly Father. Matthew 6 and 20. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. So this is us getting this wisdom and knowledge and, and storing up for our, where our heart is and for the heavens. We're seeking the kingdom. We're seeking the kingdom to come. This world is over. It's over with. And you, we can feel it. Greater things are coming. Great, greater evils are coming. Michael 7 and 9. And I'll be in chapter 7. I'm just going to jump around a couple verses. But Michael, Michael 7 and 9. I will be patient as the Lord punished me, for I have sinned against him. But after that, he will take up my case and give me justice for all I have suffered from my enemies. The Lord will bring me into the light and I will see his righteousness. Michael 14 and 15. O oh Lord, protect your people with your shepherd's staff. Lead your flock, your special possession. Though they live alone in thicket of the heights of Mount Carmel, let them graze in the fertile pastures of Bashan and Gilead as they did long ago. Like that old ancient scripture, like uh, ye man of Galilee. Uh, Michael 7, 15. Yes, said the Lord, I will do mighty miracles for you like those like those I did when I rescued you from slavery in Egypt. And that's one thing I always realized about our power and our, and our Savior. They always mention us about the great exodus in Egypt when we crossed the Red Sea. And so, but he's saying right here, Micah 7, 15. Yes, said the Lord, I will do mighty miracles for you like those I did when I rescued you from slavery in Egypt. So the Lord is going to do mighty miracles.
verse down, uh, 16, all the nations of the world will stand amazed at what the Lord would do for you. They will be embarrassed at their feeble power. They will cover their mouths up, cover their mouths in silent awe, deaf to everything around them. Yeah, the Lord is going to do a mighty work, a mighty, mighty, beautiful work. And I, and I look forward towards that. And this is the Heavenly Father speaking. Acts chapter 7, verse 49 and down. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Could you build me a temple as good as that? Asked the Lord. Could you build me such a resting place? So he basically asking, like, I built heaven. Uh, I built the heavens. I built the earth. You, the earth is my footstool. Could you build me a throne bigger than that? Can you build me a throne? Hell no, we can't. We barely can build our own house, let alone a, a whole planet. <laughs> uh, verse 50 now. Did my hand make both heaven and earth? You stubborn people, you are heathen at heart and deaf to the truth. Must you forever resist the Holy Spirit? That's what your ancestors did, and so do you. So the Lord basically saying, man, you stiff neck, you belittle, little, you little people, you small minded. Who, how dare you speak about me? How, how dare you even approach my existence? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the Almighty speaking. You know what I'm saying? It's great, great, great fear when the, when the, when the Almighty speak. You stubborn people, you heathen at heart. Dealt to the truth. Must you forever resist the Holy Spirit? That's what your ancestors did, and so do you. Name one prophet your ancestors didn't pre persecute. They even killed the ones who even predicted the coming of the righteous one, the Messiah, whom you betrayed and murdered, the Messiah, the only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. They killed him. They persecuted him. They wanted him. They'd rather have the, uh, I think it was Babarus and the other, the killers. They wanted him free when they had him on the cross. Our, our people did it. We did it. Our ancestors did it. But yeah, they they prophesied like the Lord with words, but really their heart is far from Him. Can't stand our people. Uh, what you call it? Re reprobated mind? Uh, uh, what you hi hypocrite people? Acts chapter seven verse fifty three and down. You deliberately disobeyed Yahweh's law, even though you received it from the hands of angel. The Jewish leaders were infiltrated by Stephen' accusation, and they shook their fists at him in rage. By uh, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into the heaven and saw the glory of Yahweh, and he saw Yahweh Shah standing in the place of honor at Yahweh's right hand. And he told them, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing in the place of honor at Yahweh's right hand. Then they put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They rushed at him and dragged him out of the city, began to stone him. His accusers took up their took off their coats and laid them at the feet of the young man named Saul. As they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord, Hamashiach, receive my spirit. He fell to his he fell to his knees, shouted, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. So this basically is a prophet that's being stoned to death. And, you know, he's he slowly dying. And, he, and the Lord, you know, he, he full of the Holy Spirit. He looked up to the heavens. And he see Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shah. You know what I'm saying? You know how do you I, I can't, you know, explain how you no know, the Heavenly Father, you know, he you know, of course they were mad, but do you understand that like that was a prophet that was prophesying about our power and and uh, that was a teacher basically, a messenger. And those people back then killed him, stoned him. But as he was dying, he looked up in the heavens and he saw the Heavenly Father and the only begotten. You know what I'm saying? And they looking down at this. Why did this, ha this happen? Ezekiel 25 and 17. And I will execute great visions upon them with furious rebukes. And they shall know that I'm the Lord when I shall lay my visions upon them. And that's what's coming upon this place. That's what's coming upon this place, man. Like, I'm tired of people. I'm tired of y'all playing with the Lord. The Lord's going to act up and crack, cut up. Isaiah 66, verse 15 to down. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with it cherished like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword with the Lord, please with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Yeah, two thirds of this whole earth finna get, finna get ate up. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine flesh and the abomination of the, of the mouse and shall be consumed together, said the Lord. Yeah, it's coming. Michael 4 and 1. For behold, the day coming, 
that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Finna get melted the fuck up. Salaki. For my, uh, yeah, that's how I'm feeling. In Revelation 15 and 1 and 2. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues, four of them is fill up the wrath of Yahweh. And I saw as it was a sea of glass mingled with fire, them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark, over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of Yahweh. And it's basically like explaining the Lord is coming back. He going to seek his vengeance, but it's also he going to save his, he going to cut off the two third, but the one third is going to get delivered and saved. And they're watching this as it happens. So this is a scary thing. Like, this is scary, and none of us promised the victory. Like, we have to seek our own salvation with fear and trembling. I want to end this lesson by giving our praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rakakadash. Double honors and apostles and elder, hell spreading truth out of the four corners of earth. Shalom.